Who knew benchmarking GPUs would actually be a weightlifting exercise? Good afternoon, morning. welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. If you're new here, I'm Reese of the 4Piece Variety Augie Triple XL, and we have the 7800XT Quicksilver Edition. It does have, it is kind of very cool, honestly. When I saw what they were doing with these fans, that they were making them removable and replaceable, I was like, that's very nice. When you're spending like 12,000 Rand, which, yeah, um, is, our Rand is not worth a lot, uh, international viewers. But for us, 12,000 Rand is actually quite a lot of money. So, it's like basically <laughs> like nearly six months worth of groceries for a person. So yeah, um, when you're spending that sort of money, it's nice to know that there is some implied longevity past its warranty period. And that's basically what they've set up here. And beyond that, I obviously had to do some gaming tests. It's the first chance I've really got to test FSR3 with an FSR3 certified GPU or with a good strong mid-range GPU like this. Um, so it, it naturally we had to do some benchmarking. Our Testbench 3070 Ti is going to be the one that it's fighting against. And they are comparable in size, but not really in weight. I was quite impressed with how much this weighed compared to my 1.8 kilogram nearly worth of 3070 Ti. So I was like, I didn't realize that this was actually a weight training thing dealing with these GPUs. They're, are getting comically large they're actually very similar in their build like in the base setup of the build if we look at some side by sides of them they're almost the same in uh, height the thickness of the 3070 ti or its width um looking at it dead on like that is noticeably bigger they're both going for like a two and a half slot type of design except this has noticeably less heatsink in it and still ran at better temps so they've got the wattage under control here which is really good because i was an old on 390 owner and that thing ran warm to say the least they were quite hot boys and it's just uh, showing amd's commitment to getting those things under control the like i say the parting piece for this sucker though for the 7800 xt is the fact that these fans are fully removable the motor actually sits in the back over here with the bearing and such it's all one piece so it's not just replacing the fan you're replacing the motor and the bearing at the same time which is absolutely perfect it then just magnetically sits in a slot and attaches just like that, it's just a drop-in type of fan. And they're very, very quiet, I've got to say as well. I never, ever heard this GPU get out of control. Um, and temps that we tested them on was in the range of, say, 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. Uh, conditions were pretty ideal. I would say it was like a light spring, like going in towards a bit of a summery vibe. So before we get to testing, it's important to obviously go through the test bench setup. We have our MSI Z690 Torpedo motherboard with the 13600K, now with the post micro code update. It actually boosts a little bit higher. It gets 5.2 instead of 5.1 on the B cores, which is obviously great for gaming. And then we've got uh, two 16 gigs of a Data XPG DDR5, 5200 megahertz CL38, with a Western Digital 2 TB Gen 3 NVMe, and an 850 watt gold power supply. The CPU is cooled by a good old Corsair H100 AIO. So a very good sort of baseline. And what I would expect you to have for, for a PC setup to run a GPU kind of in this bracket. Now the elephant in the room should be, we are expecting the 7800 XT to absolutely thump the 3070 Ti in rasterizing performance. And if I jump over to the laptop and I just start going through those results with you, you'll see with Firestrike as a keen example of the back foot you're going to get like a 40 percent in some cases uh improvement there like with gpu test one uh GPU test two was about 20 percent so you're gonna get uh i would say that should be your default range that was a bit of an extreme result and the cpu was running slightly better with the 7800 xt so maybe take a percent off of those scores for the graphics scores um just to kind of keep it even but if you look at the temperatures over there it was 50 versus 57 and then if we look at time spa next um that being a direct 12 test of the same kind of basis all just rasterizing the temperatures once again six degrees better for the 7800 xt and then pretty much across the board a 20 percent performance improvement 
lest we forget that uh, less than a year ago, the 3070 Ti was the exact same price as this. So generation on generation, that's a nice improvement for the same amount of money. That's what we like to see from competition from Team Red. Uh, if we look at Steel Nomad, which is a bit of a PZ cruncher, all things considered, it's about a 15% performance improvement over there as well. And then if we look at Port Royal, it's also going to come in at about 15%. And that's a ray tracing test. So you'd expect where ray tracing is concerned to see those kinds of gaps. And it's not quite the case because in video DLSS, even the older DLSS is able to keep up with FSR 3. All of, wherever I could, I enabled FSR 3 and there was only one area where it actually really thumped. So if we start going through those results now, looking at Crisis Remastered 1440p at the very high preset, you're going to notice that just because there's no DLSS, the 7800 XT lagged behind by about 18% on the average frame rate. But on the max frame rate, it was 14% faster. The one, the minimum is always one on this test because of just the way the test works. Maybe a bit of bad methodology from the way that it does work, honestly, from that perspective. But Metro, we see the exact same thing happening once again. Where DLSS is concerned, it's going to be kind of a bully beat down where you don't have DLSS versus having DLSS or FSR frame generation um, type of technology, which is only from FSR 3. It's That's what you're going to see. It's like 20% faster. And DLSS on 1440p looks absolutely fantastic these days. There's no real visual degradation from it. So that's a that honestly is a big plus for those kinds of games. But then looking at RDR2, we see the absolute thumping that comes through from having FSR uh, available. And it's basically, I would say it's comparable on video, on visual quality in RDR2. It wasn't, however, in uh, F123 and it was slower. So it didn't work very well there. And honestly, the same thing when we looked at, when we look at Wukong, there is a 15% performance uplift if, as much as that thing does break PCs. Even my 4070 on the stream PC didn't do very well with Wukong. It is an absolute PC breaker, but it did work. It did work. And that's really promising because Unreal Engine 5 is going to be the baseline for a lot of games. And so the FSR makes it a lot more competitive, especially when compared with older generation stuff. The 4070 with the, with the frame generation thumped these performance results though it was getting like a casual 60 fps so that is a quite a big difference over there then looking at non-rasterizing environments your esports kind of games if we look at dota 2 first 119 versus 121 it was two percent slower than the 37 utr and this is with all of the dlss and fsr stuff disabled and then similarly for cs same engine now we had a slight performance increase one percent faster for the 7800 xt and so i was kind of expecting a little bit more in those two tests specifically for esports and gaming kind of environments the 16 gig video memory the only time it actually was used was in Wukong, where I saw nine gigs of video memory. They got a very nice built-in benchmark, I have to say, and that's gonna be a nice addition going forward to really break these GPUs. So what's happening here in a nutshell? FSR just doesn't have the same visual quality as the DLSS. I stand and watch every benchmark. It's funny, someone told me, uh, don't you just hit the button and walk away? No, because I need to see what it actually looks like so I can ascertain what the experience is going to be like and the FSR even where it's on the newest version it just wasn't as good I also had a cyberpunk run but something happened to my results and it was exactly the same kind of experience the DLSS I'm running DLSS on balanced and FSR on balanced because you want the best between visual quality and performance and even so the balanced FSR just didn't quite deliver as much as I was hoping it to. The, this theoretically, based on the synthetic results, should have been performing better in games like CS and Dota 2, but we just don't see that coming through consistently. However, in Wukong, which is the newest engine and the first real full fat implementation that we have of AAA gaming on Unreal 5, it slapped. It did a really good job compared to the older DLSS. So, and visually, it was the best out of the lot. So, it's hopeful. It's still looking good. And I feel really sorry for AMD because they have been making more and more competitive uh, uh, cards but they're just losing market share every time it's now they're all the way back to 17 percent 
The ability to change these fans is a really nice touch from XFX. Overall, the build quality of this thing is absolutely fantastic. I like its very simplistic kind of style. It's just got one XFX like logo over here and a Radeon on the side over there. It's not too shouty. It's got pass through cooling. The weight's good. The wattage is under control. And I was worried about this thing, maybe me doing some settings that were wrong or underperforming. Resizable bar was on. I checked against the other benchmarks of similar systems with 13600Ks and with 7800 XTs, and this was in a, within a percent of average. So there's nothing I could have done really to make it perform any better and it just fell behind the Nvidia card. So yeah, it's kind of weird. It, even that being said though, if you compare it on a 1440p scale, the 7800 XT should be closer to 3080 performance. It should have absolutely destroyed the 3070 Ti. And just not seeing that on 1440p in games like CS and Dota, I don't know if it bodes well for its future as a product. It's kind of sad because these are really well priced on uh, Uncle Eve Tech. That being said, however, if, you're, if you are looking forward to like more AAA games, you know, Space Marine 2, Wukong, the, the latest and the greatest, it's still going to give you really good bang for buck. Anywho, that's all I have for you on the RX 7800 XT Quicksilver Edition. If you have enjoyed this, please hit us up with a like and subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side.